Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Pennsylvania school hit with lawsuit for refusing to tell mom her child's own gender. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from the Daily Mail, Pennsylvania mom sues school for keeping her gender-confused child's pronouns a secret and for their policy that sucks kids towards genital mutilation and chemical castration. Also from the Daily Mail, the trans school conspiracy exposed. Midwest teachers trade tips on subversively and quietly transitioning kids without telling their parents and skirting Republican gender laws in workshop funded by the federal government. The school district that's getting sued was sued just a few years ago for refusing to let kids who identified as transgender to use the bathroom of their choice. From CBS News Pittsburgh, Pine Richland School District settles lawsuit transgender students can use bathroom matching their chosen gender identity. They go from blocking kids from using the bathroom of their choice, which is a traditional values thing, okay, to settling that lawsuit allowing children to choose which bathrooms they want to go in by gender, their own choice, to now refusing to even tell parents if their children are trying to transition their genders during school. Parents don't not only have a right to know what's going on with their own children, they have a responsibility to do it. Usually in any kind of relationship dynamic, there's a right on one side and a responsibility on the other side. As a parent, you have a right to know, but you are responsible for what happens to your children. Even if it's not your fault, those are your kids. They are not adults. They're not out in the world on their own. You need to make sure they grow up okay, they're happy, they're healthy, and they have opportunities. That's what makes these kinds of stories so incredible to me. How is a parent supposed to take care of their child if they don't even know who their child is. A Pennsylvania mom who was worried about her child's transgender identity has sued her Pennsylvania school district after teachers refused to let her know if the minor was using different pronouns in class. The mother, known only as Jane Doe on Friday, sued the Pine Richland School District in suburban Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for policies that prevent staff from letting parents know if children are transitioning at school. It's the latest in a series of lawsuits aimed at the doctors, hospitals, teachers, schools, and therapists who help and in some cases encourage kids who identify as anything other than than their biological sex. And here's the rest of their policies at this school district encouraging pushing this agenda. This is from America First Legal. These are the guys who are sponsoring the lawsuit. The school district brazenly requires that schools address the student by his or her preferred pronouns, use the student's preferred name, gender, and pronouns on school records or documents such as school IDs, classroom rosters, or the yearbook. Permit the student to use whatever bathroom that the student chooses and participate on the sports team corresponding with the student's chosen gender. How can your child have a school ID with a name different from their birth name or a gender or both different from their birth identities and have parents not be aware of it? Like you're not gonna see your child's school ID. You're not gonna see your school's classroom roster or their yearbook. Like this is just an untenable, ridiculous situation. Campaigners say that trans kids need help coming out, including with puberty blockers and even surgery. But critics say it's just a fad and they instead need protection from a path toward risky medical procedures. The 20-page lawsuit was filed at the district court in Western Pennsylvania and is backed by America First Legal, a right-of-center nonprofit formed by former senior Trump White House advisor Stephen Miller. America First Legal senior lawyer Nicholas Barry said the school district and others across the United States we're all too readily enacting policies to facilitate the genital mutilation and chemical castration of children without any parental input. A parent's decision-making authority about what is in their child's best interest cannot be transferred to some agent of the government simply because a child or the government disagree with the parent's lawful decision, he said. That is tyranny. In her lawsuit, the unnamed mom says her child was facing social and emotional challenges during the COVID era lockdowns and had started becoming friends with a group of trans and non-binary youngsters. She grew worried when she found her child watching trans influencers and videos about transitioning online. She asked teachers at the school district if they could keep her posted about any steps the child was taking towards transitioning at school 
according to the court papers. But officials told her they were not allowed to breach the student's privacy in line with district policies, it's claimed. They said that under no circumstances would the school district notify her if it becomes aware that her child has requested to be addressed by different pronouns, a different name, or other exhibited behavior consistent with gender dysphoria. This, she says, trampled on her rights and responsibilities as a parent. She's absolutely right. It's the responsibility part of this that is incredible because the state is not the guardian of your children. You are the guardian, protector, and parent of your children. You are the one that must raise your children, protect your children, and help your children to make decisions that are good for them for the rest of their lives. Not teachers, not a government-appointed state representative. She seeks unspecified financial damages and her legal costs paid by the school. The complaint includes the school district's policy on transgender students from 2017. The policy says that students can choose which name and pronouns are used about them in class and official documents. But parents have access to all of those official documents. This is where it's not clear. So can the parent just request the official documents? Apparently not. That's another level of not allowing a parent to be involved with a child's life. You need to be able to have access to your child's school record as well as their medical record, obviously. The school provides a gender transition team to help students change their identity. Students are also allowed to use the bathroom of their choice and join sports teams in line with their chosen gender. It also says that notifying a student's parent or guardian about his or her gender identity or transition may be unnecessary. The school district started letting students use bathrooms to match their gender identity in 2017, and that's according to this lawsuit settlement. Back then, the district was being sued by a group of trans students who said being banned from the bathrooms matching their chosen gender amounted to discrimination. The number of trans children between the ages of 13 to 17 doubled from 2017 to 2020 to about 1.4% according to an analysis of government health surveys, now stoking fears of an ideologically driven social contagion. There's been similar rises in the number of teens seeking puberty blockers, hormones, and surgery, according to data from health insurance companies. Advocates of what they call gender-affirming care, as it's known, say the rise is due to awareness of gender dysphoria and support among clinicians. Other experts, conservatives, and parents warn of an ideologically driven social contagion. Schools are under pressure to assist trans students in this fractious political environment where the gender-affirming model touted by the American Academy of Pediatrics and other bodies is increasingly called into question. Across the U.S., school administrators have said they want to involve parents, but must follow a patchwork of federal and state guidelines designed to protect students' privacy, fight discrimination, and include everyone. On this front line in America's culture wars, parents, kids, teachers, and therapists have to make tough calls about rising rates of transgenderism, mental health issues, peer pressure, and whether affirmation on demand is always the best answer. Barry, the lawyer for America First Legal, said modern-day America resembles a dystopian novel. Quote, these schools can't give a child an Advil without parental consent because fit parents have the right to direct the care and upbringing of their children without interference from the government, he said. But these same schools will socially transition a child without any parental input. And talking about transitioning a child from the Daily Mail, the trans school conspiracy exposed Midwest teachers trading tips on subversively and quietly transitioning kids. Dozens of Midwestern teachers met online and traded tips on helping trans students change gender at school without their parents' knowledge while criticizing a raft of new Republican laws on sex and identity. DailyMail.com gained access to an online session hosted by the Midwest and Plains Equity Assistance Center. They call themselves MAP which is also an acronym for people with unhealthy relationships with children. Their organization is funded by the Department of Education, so that's the federal government, and the meeting was attended by some 30 teachers from Michigan, Iowa, Ohio, Illinois, and beyond. In the four-hour workshop, they discussed helping trans students in the face of new laws in Republican-run states on gender, pronouns, names, parental rights, bathroom access, and sports teams. Some teachers said they followed the rules, but others discussed being subversive, how their personal code of ethics trumped laws, and how to hide a trans student's new name and gender from parents. The expose comes amid growing tensions between traditional parents and some progressive teachers who say they need to protect trans students from their own families. Kicking off the workshop, Angel Nathan, the MAP specialist who hosted the session, said attendees would review the new laws in a bid to remedy the marginalizing effects and disrupt problematic policies. In the discussion and role-play sessions that followed, 
The teachers, administrators, principals, and counselors spoke about trans students and their families in a way that would alarm many parents. Kimberly Martin, the DEI coordinator for Royal Oak Schools, which serves 5,000 K-12 students in Michigan, spoke about helping trans students keep their gender change a secret. But we're working with our record-keeping system so that certain screens can't be seen by parents. If there's a nickname in there we're trying to hide, Martin told the online gathering. Jennifer Haglund, counselor for Ames Community Schools, which serves 5,000 K-12 Iowa students, complained about Republican Governor Kim Reynolds in March signing a law that bars biological males from competing on female sports teams. She bragged about her own activism of taking part in protest marches. Quote, I know that I have my own right code of ethics, and that doesn't always go along with the law, Haglin said. Shay Martin, an Ohio-based trans educator who writes a socialist, feminist, and anti-racist blog called Radical Teachers, said she worked against laws that prohibit or restrict trans advocacy. Quote, the stakes are very high for trans youth, Martin said. I think that requires working subversively and quietly sometimes to make sure that trans kids have what they need. What they need is their parents, and they need to be taken away from these teachers. Martin did not describe any subversive acts, but later spoke about teachers addressing sexuality with elementary students who are aged between 5 and 10 years old. When talking about men, women, playground crushes, love, and marriage with youngsters, Teachers should be wary of treating reinforced heterosexuality as the norm, Martin said. Finally, Yasina Jimenez, the director of educational services at Woodland School District, which serves some 4,600 K-8 students across four schools in Lake County, Illinois, slammed conservative teachers in a nearby district. Parents and teachers across Illinois have in recent years been angered by Democrat-led efforts to put tampons and sanitary napkins in boys' bathrooms so that trans female-to-male students can access them. Jimenez told her colleagues about a nearby school board meeting that exploded in violence over the tampon controversy. Quote, that became a big violent issue because the individuals who were involved are also educators, which is sickening. But at no point in this session did any teacher say parents might know what's best for their own kids, nor question whether affirmation on demand was the only way to help a trans student. Teaching new wave gender ideology in schools and secretly affirming trans identified students have become hot button issues in American culture wars between liberals and conservatives. Their organization MAP, which hosted the workshop, is part of the Great Lakes Equity Center and is funded by the federal government under Title IV of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. It serves 11.2 million students in 7,025 school districts across 13 states. In November, MAP announced it had secured an $8.5 million funding arrangement with the Department of Education and millions more elsewhere. Parents must know what's going on in their minor children's lives at all times. Children do not need to have a secret life at school away from their own family. That's not appropriate. And as children go from one grade to another, the school is going to maintain a secret for numerous years? It's completely ridiculous. It will not work. This has to stop. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.